All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a special Survivor Talk slash Movie Talk slash really TV Talk with D&D. Right. Uh, are, we, are we starting a third podcast? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. But, uh, this, this particular episode, uh, I'm I'm Dwayne. I'm David. And uh, this particular episode is going to be on both feeds. So if you're a Survivor Talk listener and you go, what, you all have a movie talk with D&D podcast? Yes, we do. You can find it on our website. Find it on our website at stwdd.com or look it up on iTunes or Stitcher or any podcast app that you use. Movie Talk with D&D. And uh, you'll find it. So tonight, we are going to talk about the... Well, David, why don't you tell them what we're going to talk about? Well, in our Facebook group, we've got people that do watch shows other than Survivor. No. And, um, and sometimes they run out of shows to watch. And the summer now is not just a season of reruns anymore. There are actual shows that go on just in the summer. So right, right. We, were, we were asked, what do you guys watch during the summer? I don't know why anybody would want our opinion, but what do you guys watch in the summer? What did, did you watch? You know, what should we watch? And at the same time, we want to ask you guys what you watch. So when Dwayne posts the link to this particular video in our Facebook group and our movie talk group, um, in the comment section, list the shows that you're looking forward to this summer and, yeah. and stuff we may have missed that you just finished watching that you recommend. Right. So. In fact, this will be in our movie talk group. Uh, maybe more of you that are not in the movie talk group will join the movie talk group. So. You can put in both, can't you? Yeah, but we want to get people to join the movie talk group. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Way come we up have, to the movie talk. That that way we have one thread and not two. Yeah, so, you know. So, True. Uh, if you haven't heard of movie talk with D and D, we just finished Captain America: Civil War. We talked for about an hour on that, and we've done several movies before that, and we're going to do uh, Everest in the next couple of weeks. Uh -huh. So it's going to be good. It, you, you never know what you're going to get. So, hey, David, let's talk about Captain America for like thirty minutes, twenty minutes, maybe. I said, yeah. okay. And then an hour did, later. Yeah, that's right. And for those of you who are patrons, this was going to be a D&D &D Extra, which if you're not a patron, every once in a while, well, during Survivor, every week, we have a special D&D &D Extra video. It's about 15 minutes long. And this was going to be one, but we thought this is this can be like we want everybody able to hear the, everybody to be able to hear this. So you'll get your D&D &D Extras during the Survivor season, and we'll talk about Survivor for those. So thank you for becoming patrons, by the way. Helps a lot. So, uh, David, I, I, you kind of have this show already, how you're going to do it in your mind. So why don't I feed off of you? I think you have okay. like four categories or something. Uh, that's exactly right. I Ian, a, you are, I you are a, on it. Wait, really, you should say four categories I have because you're wearing a Yoda hat. This is true, and this is for the last thing we'll be watching this year, which is, in, I think it's December 16th of this year, is the Rogue One movie from Star Wars that yes. comes out at the end of the year, so I can't wait for that. Yeah. Um, the first category I have, and I'll go through these real quick, is the caught, shows that I caught up and finished because I spent too much time with Survivor, talking about Survivor, spending time with my buddy online, and just re-watching Survivor. So these are the shows that I couldn't watch, that I didn't get to finish while we were during the Survivor season. All right. Um, I just finished the third season of The Blacklist. Finally caught up on that. Oh, yeah. My wife watches that. It, it's watch a good it. show, especially if you like James Spader. Um, eh, it's it's good. It's it's now to the point where I just want to find out his relationship to Elizabeth Keene because that's kind of the gist of the story. Okay. It's still good. But <laughs> the right. funny, th funny thing is when I watch it, Davis always comes into the room thinking I'm watching Age of Ultron because he's the voice of Ultron. Oh, is he? So, yeah. Oh, so, nice. Um, uh, also just finished Elementary. Which isn't nearly as good as my like favorite show of Sherlock, the BBC version. Right. But the reason I like Elementary is because it's different. It's yeah. different than the other one. I love how he solves cases. He's very grounded. I like the cast a lot. I like the entire cast of that show. And I just find each episode good. I especially like John Noble, who's playing his father. Yes. I really like him. That's a great part of the story. So if you well, can catch, go ahead. Let's talk about Elementary. I mean, we're on mm -hmm. it. So. Um, has the season ended? Because I don't think I've seen the entire season yet. Yes, it's ended. Okay, the season has ended. Um, it, it's a good season, but I like that they've kind of, I kind of like that they've they've kind of gone back to the relationship he and Watson had. Mm -hmm. They kind of experimented with her being out somewhere else, and then they brought in the other girl, whom I really liked, actually. Did mm -hmm. you like her last, was that last season they had her? Is this the girl that he was attracted to? Oh, no, because that's Moriarty. No, I'm talking about – oh, no, 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 no. 
Right. You're talking about the very intellectual girl. Yes. No, yes. I'm talking about the girl that at the beginning of the season she fought uh, Watson on the street, and she's like, and then Watson goes, "Where do you know Sherlock from?" Oh yeah. Yeah, I really liked her, but oh, that's a long time ago. Okay, maybe that was two seasons ago. But anyway, <laughs> but I like the fact that they've brought the relationship back to where it was. It's like they experimented with something, and then they came back to what really worked. Yeah. I th- it's, Elementary is one of those shows that does something that I think is difficult in that they have separate episodes, but they have carryover storylines yeah. that go from episode to episode. And they, well, to me, they do it really well. Yeah, lots of shows do that. I mean, And yeah. some shows don't do it very well. Right, some shows I, don't do it very well. Yeah, I think Elementary does it really well. Okay, so Elementary. So we both watch Elementary. I'm not finished with it. You have. We both yeah. recommend it. And I really liked it. It was a really right. good season. Okay, we both recommend it. And you don't have to have watched previous seasons to start watching it. Right. Um, I also just caught up on season two of Gotham, which is Gotham. the a prequel to Batman. Okay. It's when Bruce Wayne is a kid. Um, it's another one of those shows that you kind of say, oh, okay, I guess I'll go ahead and watch this to get, just to get caught up. And then they have a really good episode. Yeah. So it, it's not one that I've tried. Like when I watched Justified, I watched it every week on time. I did not miss those episodes. I was in love with Justified. And Lost was the same way. Gotham's good. I'll, I'll catch up eventually. I like to binge watch it. But it's it's interesting because I'm a superhero guy. Do you so. recommend Gotham? If you like superheroes, yes. It's got a good cast. It's got neat storylines. It's got a couple of scene stealers that when they're in the okay. show, that they, they're good. Uh, but if you don't like superheroes, if you don't like stories about Batman and DC and stuff, then no, I wouldn't recommend it. Do you think maybe that's why? To me, it felt really dark when I I think I might have watched the pilot. I maybe it's dark. whatever I saw was so dark that I wasn't really interested, which is odd because I kind of like dark things. Yeah. But um, but for some reason, I just wasn't interested in it. Did you think if it's like The Walking Dead, where if I gave it a chance more than a season, I might like it? <laughs> you might. It's one of those things where if you don't like this cast, you're not going to like the show. It's got some very intriguing actors, a lot of, a lot of B actors. Okay, okay. But if you get into it and really say, oh, wow, that's going to be so-and-so, then to me, I got into it that way. I like the cast. Okay. It's got Don, Donald Logan, in it, and I like him a lot, so it's, it's got a lot of good people in it. Well, let me ask you this. You, you say B actors. Do you mean B in the quality or B in they're not well-known, but they're good actors? B as in they're not well-known, but they're okay. good actors. Okay, so not like, you know, lifetime movie actors. A step above those. Okay, okay, good. Now, there are some faces you'll recognize, but overall, there's no giant you know, A-list stars in it. All right, so Gotham, you recommend if you like superhero stuff. I didn't really give it a chance, so I can't recommend it. Okay. I mean, why, uh, not, rec- why not give our recommendation after every show, right? Right. I also took advantage of my Amazon Prime trial and watched Survivor Nicaragua because S- I got tired. stwdd.com slash Amazon. Because I got tired of Steve Helling saying, I just watched Nicaragua, and Judd, Fabio, is a better winner than people give him credit for. Yeah. And the funny thing is, he had a similar ending that Michelle had. He came on strong at the right time. It's not like he controlled the game. He had a good social game, but he came on strong at the end, and I thought it was so ironic that I just watched it happen. Yeah. I don't, I don't go back and watch Survivor. I, I'm done once I watch it. But I said, you know what? There's all these seasons on there. I got Prime free for a while, so I'll watch it. And I really enjoyed it. I, I loved it. I, are you are you going to keep Prime? I don't have it right now because it ran out. <laughs> Gosh, man, I got to tell you something. Being able to, and, and I'm not trying to sell Amazon Prime, although I'd love for you to sign up for it. But uh, I love the fact that you get free shipping. You get it. I mean, like, I can want something and I'll get it, like, on a Sunday. Timothy ordered a book and got it on a Sunday even. Now, anyway, I, I am going to pick... I'm going to pick it up this Sunday. I mean, this summer. I'm going okay. to get back in. I'm going to go ahead and pay for it and get a whole a year of it because yeah. there's a bunch of shows I want to watch, including one later on. I'll talk yeah. about. But, All but right. that's but that's what I've caught up on. So Those you went back and watched a Survivor season, which I've never watched a whole Survivor season from the past, and it was really good. Yeah. Well, I also wanted to watch it because Dr. Jill was in it. Right. We met from Durham War Survival Challenge, so I wanted to see how she played. And it's funny because she was in the same boat that I was in. She got tribe swapped. Before the merge, and she was in the minority on the new tribe. Ah, that was kind of neat. They also made her color her hair. For the yes, show. they didn't need another blonde. They wanted a yeah. red. All right, so David recommends Survivor Nicaragua. I recommend going back and watching Survivor. Well, I mean, I recommend. Yeah, you can go back and yeah. watch any Survivor. It's going to be good. Yeah. All right. So my next category is shows that I'm trying to get through. I'm, I'm trying to finish. You know how you record on DVR and you're like, well, I've got all the shows. I might as well just finish it. One of them is 
Agents of Shield. I know you don't watch it, and I know Connie does. Yes, but it's I watch it with Davis and Terry. It's a family thing, so we're gonna finish it eventually. But we got like three episodes left to finish. Doesn't it like yeah. tie into the movies though? Like, does the movie it, give anything away, or the show give things away? Or? It tied in to, to Captain America: Winter Soldier. It okay. tied into that one. Um, I don't know. It's gonna tie into future movies because okay. of some, some of the other beings that are going to be in it but yeah. it's still when we watch it we enjoy it but yeah. it's kind of one of those things where we got to get everybody together so it makes it kind of hard yeah. um the other show that we're trying to finish <laughs> by the way by the, so you recommend do, do you recommend it to people i do if you like the marvel database okay. if you yeah. like that kind of stuff if don't, you don't then no i watched it a little bit my wife loves it what it really is for me that and uh um uh, Oh, what's that movie with all the fairy tale characters in it? That that show, Once Upon a oh, Time. Once upon a time. <laughs> Those are shows that Connie gets. Yeah, neither one of us recommend that. Those are shows that Connie gets to watch when I'm not around, right? Yeah. Like all these other shows we talk about, where I, the ones where I'm going to say yes, we watch these shows. We have to wait till we're both watching to be able right. to watch, right? So Once Upon a Time, she watches while I'm podcasting. Uh, Agents of Shield, she watches. Uh, Blacklist she watches while I'm doing that and then she watches uh, Fixer Upper while I'm not around even though I like that show a lot now have you ever seen Blacklist? yes and I enjoyed it yeah. but I never but it got but I was like Connie you can watch this without me because it yeah. did I mean I like James Spader even though I thought he was in Revenge of the Nerds and he wasn't um <laughs> <laughs> wow but I, I like James Spader a lot I really liked him opposite uh, Captain uh oh and uh boston legal yes that was such a good show such yes a good that show. that's where he came back into oh the man that was such a good show anyway so that's what that show is for me that is yeah. a i don't watch it but i can but i really don't see, agents see of Sh uh, yeah go ahead go ahead no you go ahead agents of shield see the problem with agents of shield is i don't want to get into it because i have other shows that i want to watch and the problem is i sit down and i'm like well, why is he turning into this weird-looking monster? And I'm like, wait, sorry, don't tell me. Because Connie will pause it and tell me the whole history of the show up to that point. So i got to be really careful not to get interested when See, I'm watching that, it. But that was a really good part of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, I know it was. <laughs> I know it really uh, got me interested. That was really good. It's like, but wait, I right. thought he was a good guy in the first season. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is not something you pick up in no. the middle of a season. No, no, it's not. But, you know, now you kind of make me want to go back and watch Boston League. <laughs> there you go. I that know. Was such a good show. I know. Especially the end where he and Shatner would sit outside yeah. and just have the wrap up. Oh, and tell me it, it isn't hard now that we can't binge watch everything, right? I hate so, that. <laughs> so one of the shows that I'm watching is The Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, my friends, it is amazing. Now, it has it has some relations in it. It is yes. TV me a TV M A, so it's not like. Um, graphic or anything, but it has relations in it. Apparently, being a spy means you yeah. enjoy other people's company often. Um, so I binge watched the first two seasons on Netflix, mm -hmm. and the current season is on FX. I gotta wait a week between each episode. That's not how we watch TV anymore. This is wrong. <laughs> That's why I love Nicaragua because I got to binge watch the whole season of Survivor. Yes. That was awesome. Okay, so I've got to tell you, I highly, highly recommend The Americans if you can handle a TV MA show. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing show. Yeah. And David, you're the one that told me about it. Yes, and I've got to go back and watch. See, are you on season three or are you, is I'm live the, season? I'm on the current season. That may be three or four. I don't remember. Okay. Oh, but it's good. Is their handler an older lady? Not anymore. There was for okay. a little bit. Yeah. I think I think I'm right about the same place, but I got to go back and catch up with that. We really enjoyed that, but that's another show that took up DVR space. Something else came on at the same time. We, I said, all right, we'll just go back and catch up with that. We need some more DVR space, dude. Well, we're switching vendors in this, okay. this, in next month, so it, it's going to change. Right. <laughs> and of course, the first couple seasons are on Netflix, so you don't have. Yes, to. absolutely. So there you go, America. By the way, no, I'm not going to put podcast notes and go back through and tell you every single show and whether we liked it or not. I know that 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 would make us an amazing podcast, but. I'm not going to do it. And we're not amazing. The, <laughs> other, the other show that Terry and I watch together, just Terry and I, um, is called Vikings. Oh, it, that's on – what channel is that on? I want to see the yeah, the History Channel. History Channel. I think I've seen it advertised while I was watching uh, – That's Rick. just really good. I could not tell you a single person in that movie, I mean that show, 
Um, but I know there's some of the names you, you probably won't recognize, but like the main <laughs> character. No, uh, I, don't, I don't recognize names. Uh, this guy, Ragnar Lothbrook, is actually the main character in the new Warcraft movie. Oh, wow. He plays in that, which is pretty cool. Um, but we just, that's a really neat story. It's about Vikings. Obviously, it's about invading England and different parts of France and Paris. And it's just really good. It's got, it's like a soap opera. It's like a Viking soap opera. So is and it kind of like a Game of Thrones type of thing? It is. Dun, it dun, it dun, is T V M A at times, but it's not R rated. But it no, is. No, I meant uh, I meant like the like the time period and stuff. It is. They do have some deep accents at times, so you got to really listen to some of their conversations. Yeah. But it's very um, nomadic. It's very down to earth. It's very. There's no golden statues. There's no castles. There's no anything like that. There's no dragons with women riding on the backs of them. Not yet. Okay. Um, but it's really out in the dirt in the hills and how they lived back then. So it seems authentic. Right. But it's really, it's really interesting. But it's one of those you would you have to go back and start from the beginning. Is uh, this on Netflix changes. or? Um, I don't think it's on Netflix. But if you have the History Channel, you should have on demand. Okay. On the History Channel. All you right. Should. So the Vikings. Stuff. David recommends. I've never seen. Yes, I do recommend the Vikings. Um, so that's what I've just finished. Now for what we're enjoying right oh, now. Oh wait, let me see if uh, I finished anything. I thought you were following along. Well, I am, but if you mention anything that I have finished... Oh, okay. No, go ahead. <laughs> I've, this is the first time I have notes. Yeah, I really. I really notes. should just shut up and let you do it. Oh, by the way, it's Minion Poster Night. Yes, I see that. Yeah. It, your your room is very confusing to anybody that might be watching. Why does he have Survivor, but he's got... Movie, oh, he's got a he's got his little block, Survivor and Movie Talk. At yeah, same time. yeah I did cool. that on purpose, because it's kind of both. Tonight. Yeah. So what I'm enjoying right now, and I'm and I'm enjoying these four shows immensely. Um, first is a rewatch because I don't get to see Justified anymore, and because I have HBO free for five episodes, and Bailey had it free for the first five episodes. Oh, you are um, so bad. I'm rewatching Deadwood. Deadwood. It, Deadwood, which is a western on HBO. What, what it, had, it ran two seasons, and then it actually ran three seasons, and then it just abruptly ended. But it's one of my favorite TV shows. It is very bad language, I'll admit right now. I'm, I'm not proud to say that language. But it is gritty. It is de up in Dakotas, and it's just awesome. It's got, it's got one of the best cast I've ever seen in a TV show. Yeah. And it's, it's just one of my favorite shows. And I would own all three seasons if I really wanted to spend the money, but I don't need to. You said it was uh, two seasons. I, I know. I, said, I corrected myself. It went, it went three seasons. Okay, well, let me ask you this then. Do I, I mean, if I get involved in a show – and it ended abruptly, does that mean there's a cliffhanger at the end of three and it doesn't feel resolved? No, it's based on the history of Deadwood itself. It's loosely oh. based on the history. So it's it's based on, it's you can actually on, go to Wikipedia. And based see on it. trees that are chopped down, dead it, wood. It, yes, and it starts with Wild Bill Hickok. You know, that are really town. old men. Sorry, I didn't it's, say that. It's, it's one of the startup <laughs> towns that was around the gold rush. There was some okay. other kind of up there and they built around that. So it's really good, but it, I'll be honest with you. Between you and me and the and the people listening, if you're an adult watching at home, use earphones or make is sure about that. Bad? Bad? It's, really? it's got language, yeah. I'm afraid it's got well, it's it already, is it's HBO, already, so yeah, yes. Okay. But if you if you like that kind of stuff, and I love westerns, I love Timothy Oliphant because it's not Justified's over, and uh, and and okay. Ian McShane who's in it too. But it's got, I am it's, not it's, watching Deadwood. Those of no, you, I and I have so many other shows lined up that I can't imagine I'll get to it. So, um, speaking of HBO. Yes. Um, so friends of mine were asking me because I work with people like this if I've ever seen Silicon Valley, and I noticed that Patrick mentioned it. It's one of the shows he's watching. I've started watching it. Oh no! And oh my gosh, it's so funny. See, I like started the first five minutes and didn't get past it. Oh my! Well, I know people like this. I work with people like this, and Terry used to work for people like this. Okay. And it's to me, it's one of those things. If they're they're you know they're there are guys well, that aren't around yeah. women, and, and you know, <laughs> and just, not by choice. Yes, exactly. But it's so, and it's if it weren't for bad luck, they'd have no luck at all. But I mean, it's to me, it's just funny. These guys are wisecracking on each other, and they're trying to do startup companies. Okay, and, and that's what it's about in Silicon Valley, and it's just funny. I just, it's it's like watching the league about the fantasy football guys. Uh huh. It's you know they have their potty jokes and stuff, but it's just funny. And I just, I don't know, maybe that's just me. So it's, it's a comedy for people who understand computer geeks. Geeks. You don't have to be one. Correct. 
Okay. As long as you, but if you understand those type of people, you this it's and it's not to the point where all they talk about is theories and right. apps and writing code. It's not about that. It's just about guys trying to start this business. Okay, and it it I mean, well, that would explain why Patrick would like it. I mean, Patrick's yeah. the guy who has helped us with our website so much. Yes, you know, like Patrick, our website looks so good because of Patrick. Patrick could be one of these guys. There are some very smart guys in this show that are cool. You know, there's not, they're not all bad. I mean, there's okay. some cool guys too. All right. So okay. Know. All right. Good. Good. Um, so I'm and, not watching that one either, but yeah. that doesn't mean I, I just happen to not be watching it. But also on HBO, I am thoroughly enjoying Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Dun, 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 because dun, 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 I am a book reader. Yeah. Great. One of the best openings of, of any show. But anyway, uh, I'm a book reader. So I'm enjoying it. And I know people's, people that don't read the books are like, ah, this didn't really make sense. Ah, this didn't really jump too far. But you know what? If you, you Take it for what it's worth. They can't put everything from the book into the show. But he hasn't even written book six yet. And they're already exactly. on season six. How, how is that working? Explain this to me. He's given them some information about the next book. So, okay. but, because I think I even saw in an interview that the next book's not going to be even done anytime soon. He'll probably never get it done. Well, not why should he? Not the rate he's going. So <laughs> well, he'll still sell a billion books. But but the thing is, not everything that happens in the show is going to be in the book. Right. Not everything in the book is going to be in the show. So there's going to well, be yeah. some difference. Like um, the girl with no name. What was her original name? Arya. Yeah, Arya's. Like you you told me, her story early on was different than it was in the book. See, uh, I, I only read, I think, maybe the first two books. That's like Bailey. She read the first couple, and then she got so wrapped up in the show, she just said, like, I'll go read them. Yeah. See, I might read the last book again, Dance with Dragons, before the next book comes out, because just to catch myself up on that, because yeah. it's it's kind of like a different TV show to read the books. Oh, yeah? It's a TV show, yeah. But it's not as bad as, like, Under the Dome, which was so far off of the book, it was ridiculous. No, this is way, this is very close to the book, okay. but it's almost like with Arya's story, and I don't want to spoil anything, but there was so much more to her story than what we're seeing. It's gotten to the end of it pretty yeah. quick. You know, at the end of a segment that she went through. Right. And the book had so much more detail. And it might seem long and drawn out, but at the same time, everything meant something. Right. And that's the thing about I'm telling Bailey. Every person you see in the TV show, because it's so concise, is going to mean something down the road. Well, so one thing that I'm in, okay, so I wasn't going to watch it this season. Mm -hmm. Just because in, in the past, and some seasons were worse than others. It was just like sex for the sake of sex in this show. It was just like. How many times can we show two people doing this, you know? Yeah. And it was just like, you know, I don't I don't need to fill my head with that. But I thought I would give this season a chance, and it's not that way this season. So There's, there's too much action going on. It's, so it's for me, it's nice to finally watch Game of Thrones without having to – I mean, when, when you first said you were watching it with your daughter, I don't care if she is 22 years old, I was still thinking, I wouldn't want to watch this with a 22-year-old girl. Yeah. You know, but this season is so much different. You know, the, and it, at the end, not this past episode, uh, but the one before when she flies out on the dragon, I was applauding at the end. I mean, I wanted to get up and become a Darth Rockian and however you pronounce it and fight for her and take over the seven kingdoms. I mean, it was amazing. So are, are we spoiling or not spoiling or how are we? Well, I mean, if you haven't watched the show, then you have no idea what I'm talking about and you won't remember it when you do watch it. So I didn't like well, Spoil too much. The episode before that in the snow where it ended in the snow. Oh, oh, okay. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Skip ahead like a couple minutes. Spoiler alert. Oh my gosh. That was amazing. It was. That was incredible. It was one of the saddest and best written scenes I've ever seen. It broke your heart, but at the same time, you had I applauded that. Yeah. But I but I had to get up for a minute and just I had to go get some something some more water or something out the door. That was Gosh. that just killed me. That oh was my goodness! Such a well-written scene, and such. I mean, it just makes you wonder how long have they known that that's why Hodor is is Hodor. Sorry, I said it wrong. Yeah, you know, <sighs> oh, that was incredible. That was yes. awesome, and, and I love it when stories do that when they wrap around themselves like it's a circle, mm -hmm. like this caused this, but this could have never happened unless this happened, and yet this right. happened and it caused that. I love it when stories do that. Yeah, there's a whole lot more detail about Game of Thrones, but the um, and what's funny is, and it's you're gonna chide me for listening to another podcast, but no, I'm I, not. I know, <laughs> but the um, 
the slash film podcast that I listen to, David Chen, who does that, like he's like the you of that podcast. He also has the King of Thrones podcast. Oh, okay. And listening to him and the girl that he's with, I don't know her name, but she's read all the books. He hasn't uh-huh. listening to them do that podcast is like rewatching each episode. And well, it's really good. There's a show on HBO after after the, show. After the Thrones. It is show. so good. Those guys really go into detail. Yeah. Well, that's well, I can't listen to that while I'm driving. So, but yeah, but yeah, I got yeah, I did see that was on HBO. I haven't yeah. started watching that yet though. All right, so we both recommend it. Although I recommend it guarded, like. Like, to but me, but you know the books are the same way. After the first couple of books, it's more about story and yeah. about movement and drama and getting and revenge. And you're right, though. The first couple of books, the first couple of seasons, it's just like how much more yeah. we, we, we've seen it. It I mean, became else, very sure. gratuitous, you know. I mean, it didn't yeah. even push the story even. So yeah. And anyway, go ahead. So anyway, the other thing I'm watching right now, if we're done with Thrones, yes. um, that and it's because I have we, Bailey and I were channel surfing. And it was either this or Sister Wives, and I'm, I don't watch Sister Wives, oh, so <laughs> so we stopped. And it was on Naked and Afraid, and it was showing a rerun. And I happened to catch the episode of Matt and Lindsay, and oh. it didn't dawn on me for like five minutes that that's the Matt that went out with Steve Helling. Yeah, for, for the couple was it two days or three days? Three days. Naked three days. and Afraid for three days. Two nights and three days it was a special abbreviated version for Steve Helling from People Magazine, and I'm like. I stopped it. Paused. I said, "I think that's the guy that went with Steve Helling." And yeah. it was like, "Whatever." So I took a picture and I sent it to Steve, and he said, "Yep, that's that's Matt." So, right. and it was really good. Twenty one days. There was there were six days with nothing but rain, no food, no water, nothing but rain. I mean, they had to have drunk something, but still, he was like unfazed. This guy was amazing. I'm like, no yeah. wonder you survived because this guy did everything. I'm sure. Yeah. So, but so, so, and as I'm talking to Bailey, I was telling her, I said, Steve took duct, duct tape. And Matt was pretty impressed. And they made clothes. You know, they covered themselves. And Bailey's like, they usually don't cover themselves. I'm like, what? What do you mean usually? I said, what are you talking about? And she goes, well, I watch it sometimes. I didn't know she watched the show. She goes, yeah, yeah. it's kind of interesting about just surviving and stuff. Yeah. And it's about willpower. Problem is, once you start, you can't stop. So how many episodes have you binge watched? So she and I sat there and watched the next two hours of two episodes. <laughs> and then I saw that that night there was three new episodes. So I recorded them. And then it, I think the season started tonight or something, and I, and I recorded all of them. So I got I got like six hours of making it for you to watch. Nice. It was just really good. Yeah. They, I think they picked the best episodes to show because it was like you're rooting for these people. There were no mean people. They yeah. were just – some people didn't get along. Some people did. But still, you root for them, and you're so impressed with these people to get through this. Sometimes. Wow. Sometimes I am. I have watched a lot of Naked and Afraid. Um, yeah. I'm not caught up by any means, but uh, it's that's one of those shows where I kind of like, okay, I watch one and then I get hooked for a couple episodes, you know? Yeah. Um, it definitely is survival. There are cameramen out there. Yes. So theoretically, there are other people that you could talk to. There's also another person out there with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not as good as Alone, which we'll talk about in a little bit, mm-hmm. but uh, but – but it is enjoyable, and it's not as long as alone either. But so. you're also naked, <laughs> dealing with the elements yeah, I know. and everything else out there. But I will say one episode I watched just recently, the guy uh, got to a point where he wasn't eating, and his brain told him he wasn't hungry. And he went into like a shutdown mode where he was actually getting worried about himself causing problems for himself yeah. or for other people. And the girl was like trying, begging him to eat. And he wouldn't eat. And after day five or day six, production pulled him from the game. Really? Due to his mental status. Dude, I need to watch that one. His mental okay. status. So I hate to spoil this, but this chick, Tawny was her name, went the rest of the time by herself. Yeah. That's impressive. Day six to day 21, by yourself out there. And there was a bear out there, by the way. Cool. So that was that was just awesome. But like you said, I'm probably going to watch it in little short binges. I'm not going to watch it every night. I'll probably watch two or three at a time and then go off from yeah. there. But it, but it was good. It was, a, And it's definitely one of those you don't have to watch from the beginning. Right. You so can we, pick up an episode. So we can both recommend Naked and Afraid as a good filler when you yeah. need filler stuff. Keep it on the DVR. When you show it, when you're not a show, it's just the one of those. Yeah. Well, we mentioned Alone. Can I talk about Alone? Yeah, because this we're in the Enjoying Now section. Okay, so I watched the first season of Alone, binge-watched. I binge-watched it. And uh-huh. what Alone is, is literally they put 10 people out there, 
and they put them through camera training and other things like that beforehand because not only are you surviving with 15 items that you get to bring out of a list of 50, um, but they also have to film it. And they don't just have to like, they have to film it correctly. Like studio, I mean like quality, production quality filming it. So, which is interesting because some of the, the guy that won last season said the first two weeks, the most difficult part was filming. Because yeah. when you walk up a hill, you got to do it twice. You got to go once to set up the camera, and then you go again, you know, to film yourself going up. Do you have think, to act surprised when you go up to the top and you see buildings and houses on the other side of the hill? Dude, there aren't any buildings or houses. <laughs> this is way up north in uh, in Alaska area. I don't remember the name of the area, but there are bears, there are cougars, there are wolves, there are. I mean, literally, people, like, have bears outside their tent. Yeah. So, I mean, it is, and you are alone, completely alone. One guy in the first season, I don't want to spoil anything, I'm in the middle of second season, which is actively going on right now. I highly recommend this show. Um, one guy in the first season, um, he punched the, there's a red button on your GPS. Mm -hmm. Once you punch it, you're out of the game. Okay. You punch it, they're on their way. But they still had to find him. It took yeah. him two and a half hours to get there, and he was afraid of a bear that was outside of his tent. You know? But wow. it still took them two and a half hours to get there. Yeah. You know? So I'm telling you, this is as real as real gets, and it is amazing. The second season, these people are better than the first season. All right, I'm adding this to my looking forward to list. Absolutely got to watch alone. All right, so something on my looking forward to list that I think you've already seen that we can talk about is Bloodline. Yes, season one was amazing. This is on Netflix. Yes, and uh, season two is out, and I have not started it, but okay. it is really good. And this is one of those where the first episode, they got gratuitous junk in it, gratuitous sex in it that they didn't, didn't, didn't have to put in there. And I think they do that just to catch people or something. But then mm -hmm. the rest of the season didn't have that. So you don't have to worry about that if that bothers yeah. you. It doesn't bother me. I just wish it's unnecessary. You know? Right. I mean, you know, I'm married. I forget it. But anyway, yes. uh, <laughs> you know where I'm going with that. <laughs> but anyway, excellent season, uh, excellent show. It is one of those shows that is a continuous. It's not an episode by episode. It is one long story. And you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta watch the next one. I gotta watch yeah. the next one. Amazing! It is heart wrenching. It is emotional. It is so good. Acting mm -hmm. is amazing. Really good show. And I'm looking forward to watching season two. Oh, um, oh goodness! I just had something. I was just going to. Oh, since we're talking about Netflix, if you like Marvel, if you like superhero stuff, and this is it's it's probably a PG-13 or R-rated because of language and violence, but Daredevil. Seasons one and two, amazing. Okay. And Jessica Jones, who's also in the Marvel database. Her season one is done, and that was that was pretty good. It got better at the end. Huh. That that was good. All and right. there's more coming on. Iron Fist is coming up. Luke Cage is coming up. So there's Netflix has put has got to deal with Marvel. They're putting out All a right. Daredevil with Charlie Cox is awesome. Really, really good. All right. Can I so, say? Can I add a show to our upcoming list that I know is on your list? What's that? Peaky Blinders. Hello. In fact, I want to go back and watch seasons a series one and two before I watch series three again. It was that good. I'm tr see, I can't remember. I know that Terry and I watched Copper, which is a similar timeline. We got it from the library. I don't think she watched Peaky Blinders, so I would love to go back and watch Peaky Blinders again with her. It is just so, so we good. can get ready for season three. Oh, oh it's man, really, so Cillian good. Murphy is oh, awesome. Really Excellent good. show. It is again TVMA for sure. It's a period piece though. It's it's yeah. just it's so good. Yeah. Last se oh, last season ended incredibly. Yeah. Excellent season. day. Yes. Uh, uh, and, and that's on my looking forward to list. Peaky Blinders, Bloodline, and Alone. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I mean, the next season of Survivor is coming up in a couple months. What? So, yeah, yeah, September. Yeah, and by the way, I mean, I am so tired of getting... Our Survivor Talk Twitter handle, of course, I follow a lot of Survivor people, right? Mm -hmm. so I'm, I see it. Why are people talking about season 34? in season 33 at the beginning of the summer just you know it'll be here before you know it just chill i have a solution for that 
do what I do and take a Twitter sabbatical. Well, I can. I got to promote. Well, I don't get on it a whole lot. I just, yeah. I have certain tweets set up to tweet, so I don't have to get on there to do it. But oh my I, gosh, it's like, it's like, look at this person from season 33. Well, let CBS tell us that. But yeah. I, that, that that's just me. Some people really like that. Now, I will admit, I do get on when I have like a notification, but I also, there's a couple of people I talk to about Game of Thrones. Yeah. You know, they tweet stuff and I, that I think is very interesting. People put up theories about brand and all this kind of stuff that I find are interesting. Yeah. So that's, that's true. I do get on for that. Of course, part of, part of that for us is that we are so engrossed in Survivor during the season that I kind of need a break when it's not the season. You know? Right. So, but anyway. Uh, did you watch Roots? I did not. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I never saw the first one. Yeah. Um, I didn't really have a desire to see the first one. I don't know why. I just never did. I but did see the first one. one. That was a long time ago. This one, I thoroughly okay. enjoyed it. And it just really reminded me that slavery was around long before the Europeans and the Americans did it. You know? I mean, yeah. the Africans were enslaving themselves. And before that, I mean, slavery is in the Bible. It's all throughout history. There has been slavery, and uh, it just it just reminded me, you know. I mean, it was just crazy. The whole thing was just, it was excellent. It was excellent, and I loved watching the family go through those generations. Yeah. And uh, anyway, it gave, you know, I, I it gave me an, a, a more of. I already had an appreciation, but it gave me even more of, a, of an appreciation of what um, those early Africans had to deal with when they came over, and then their generations after that, you know, after the Emancipation Proclamation, it wasn't over, you mm -hmm. know? And so, anyway, it was excellent. It was an excellent show. So I had a few movies listed down, but this is TV Talk. Let's just keep it TV Talk. We'll talk about movies when we do um, uh, Everest. Okay. So yeah. we talked about Game of Thrones. We talked about Peaky Blinders, Bloodline, Alone, Roots. Uh, I'm watching the NHL Stanley Cup Finals right now. Mm -hmm. I have it paused so I can go back and finish watching it. Um, the Americans. What about The Walking Dead? Is it over? Where Where is it? Are you kidding? There's a giant cliffhanger at the end. Oh, where are you in the first book? Oh, yeah. See, I'm like they're in the prison or something. Wow, like. you've gotten pretty far. Yeah, and I've stopped reading. I haven't been back in the comic lately. But, uh, yeah, there's some pretty hefty... Some woman just came into the prison, and they have her in a uh, in a cage right now because they don't know if they can trust her or not. Right. That's yeah. where I'm at. Now, was that in the show? I don't know about the woman in the cage, but the prison was definitely in the show. Okay. I mean, well, that's a some... major, it's a major Woo! show. Yeah, there's yes. some... Mm. Yep. Yeah. All right, so I might watch The Walking Dead, but only if like I run out of everything else. And I would wait till between seasons, between Survivor seasons, because yeah. you know, so, we're so distracted during Survivor seasons. All right. Wow, your computer sounds so good. Oh, By the now? way, we bought you a freaking hard drive. Install the thing. I, yeah, I got to get to that. Yeah, you got to get to that. All right, David, any, any other shows? No, but it's getting louder, so it's probably about time to wrap it up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm look at us. Us. I'm watching the Copa America, the uh, soccer tournament over here. I'm getting ready to watch Euros, the soccer tournament over there. Oh. And, and, and I'm going to go watch the end of the NHL and then tw text you what happened. Hey, no, you're not. Didn't Manchester United get beat by some no-name team or something? We got beat by a couple of no name teams, but no, we we just won the FA Cup at the end of the season. That oh, season. I thought, I thought some like really low-ranked team – came up through the ranks and ended up winning everything. And what's with people dying in, on soccer fields? Oh, yes. It so happens so much. A team that was a long shot to win went won the whole league this okay, year. Okay, yes. okay, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, that's just a health thing. They get, things get missed, and just it's crazy. But, okay, I, in all seriousness, David, you don't see it in the NFL. You don't see it in baseball. You don't see it in hockey. Obviously, you don't see it in golf and things like that. But what is it about soccer that you have 20-something-year-old guys dying of heart attacks on the pitch? Well, for one thing, it's 45 minutes of nonstop. Football, you get breaks. Baseball, you walk around the bases. Hockey, you come off the ring. For 45 minutes, they are nonstop. Well, then they need to do something about that because, I mean, literally, you can look up on YouTube people dying on the soccer pitch or soccer field, and there are a lot of videos because a lot of people die playing soccer. There, there are, but they're also old. I mean, there's not one every day. But one just happened a couple, like a month ago. 
Hmm. No joke. It happened about a month ago. Yeah. A guy died right there on the field playing soccer. Just plump on the field, dies of a heart attack. And kids have problems at football camps, preseason football camps. They suddenly have heart attacks from heat exhaustion and everything else. I mean, I mean, it happens. Unfortunately, it happens. No, I understand that, but it's just like it's it happens unusually often in mm -hmm. professional soccer is what yeah. I was. So I was just wondering if professional soccer has ever thought about, look, we're going <laughs> to limit how long people can play or something. No, they'll never do that. They might if people keep dying. No, I mean, we're not talking the... about concussions. We're talking about death. They'll, they'll put stricter medical regulations on them. Well, then they be, need to. Physical because... as well, checkups. Yes, you're right. Gosh, that's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, you don't think so? <laughs> and on that note, no, yeah, no, no, I, I, I mean seriously, no, I, it's a it's serious not, question. I it's I don't I don't see it as widespread as you do, but I mean they could put more medical stipulations on things. They they certainly could. And why they're not already there, I don't know. Because well, they, okay. these guys should be tested for heart murmurs and other problems yeah. and things like that. But if something suddenly happens, then yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. I just mean widespread with relation to other professional sports. Right. You know, I mean, I don't see a lot of other professional sports where people just die on the field. And, I, and you can find several on YouTube of soccer players dying on the field more than you can of any other sport. So that, that's what I was wondering about. I mean, on the other hand, you got NFL that's thinking about not even having kickoffs anymore. Yeah. Because, I mean, you imagine two guys running top speed at each other and they hit each other as hard as they can. Mm -hmm. You know, people get really badly hurt doing that. Yeah. So I'm sure uh, Mike and Cleveland will have something to say about this. Speaking of which, can't <laughs> wait for the next NFL season. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, all right. You know, so uh, if you want to support us, stwdd.com slash Amazon, shop Amazon. Uh, you can go to our website, mtwdd.com or stwdd.com. Takes you to the same place. Uh, consider becoming a patron, a D and D patron, for as little as a dollar or two a month, or as much as twelve or more, if you want to do that. Uh, support us monthly, and you get a little, a few extra perks, and you also, of course, help us pay the bills every month, which there are bills even during the summer. So thank you very much. So. All right, David, I'm going to go watch the rest of the, uh, or I'm so, going to pick up at the beginning of the second period. Penguins or Sharks? Uh, I'm going for San Jose, but I think Pittsburgh's going to win. Yeah. Actually, I don't really care who wins, but I want San Jose to win tonight, so there's a game six. And then whoever wins game six, I want the other, you know, so I, I kind of want let, it to be a game seven. Let me tell you, when it comes to basketball, baseball, and game sevens, none of them compare to an NHL game seven. For some reason, hockey game sevens are just amazing. And I was telling somebody today, they were like, I never could get into hockey. And I said, did you understand hockey? No. That's why. Once you learn hockey and you understand the rules and you understand plays and stuff, oh, my gosh. It is I mean, phenomenal. You, you have a new respect for the goalies. You have a new respect for how hard it is to get it past the goalie. I mean, yeah. just the game itself. But except for that game seven we watched at your house when you were in Chesapeake because it was like a blowout and we were eating and talking oh, about sad well, stuff yeah. on the third period. Yeah. So otherwise, I mean, they're, they're pretty good. I mean, sometimes the missed shots, are, are at, they are even more exciting than the made shots. Oh, yeah. You know, it's such a low-scoring game. It's like they say about soccer, you know. Yeah. But it's such a low-scoring game. Yeah, but it's incredibly fast-paced, and there are so – oh, man, some of those shots that they miss and the go, way they set them up, oh, man. Go go watch your low-level local hockey team next season when they come back and then watch the NHL, NHL and you have yeah. an appreciation for how good yeah. those guys really are. Yeah. And, to be fair, the NHL has the absolute best play-by-play -play commentator in the nation. I don't know his name, but he's on the Stanley Cup right now. He just won another Emmy for how wow. good he is. He's wow. amazing. Especially, like, the last two minutes, he's nonstop just calling out people's names. He ain't doing this. He's, you know, blocking out here the puck. And, and he never misses a beat. It's mm. amazing. So, all right, everybody. Thanks for watching and or listening. Survivor Talk with D&D &D or Movie Talk with D&D. &D. See you later, guys. See you. Bye.